Ah, this is the champagne one or something, I think. I think, uh, well, I, out of turn nine, I think I, I knew that that was it. Come on, you beauty! Come on! You just felt the whole season literally boiling down to, to one lap. Come I knew on, inside of me at that time that with a much fresher set of tyres, Max wouldn't have given up that opportunity for, for anything or anyone. I think I would like to sound fairly calm, collected, rational in a lot of my radio transmission and, and communications with Max, but... Oh my lord, Max! Yes! Oh my god! I, I have to admit that was me screaming down the radio at that point and not, not Albon, um, bless him. You know, to have you know, this kind of celebration all together, it's just really, uh, yeah, it was really special, really amazing. Max Verstappen! You are the world champion! The world champion! <laughs> Mate, you absolutely deserve it! Have you got a message for the young boy who was you, who wanted to be a world champion now that you are one? Uh, the best advice I've ever given was, I think, for my dad. Just, you know, be yourself and also, you know, when you get successful, you have to stay yourself like, you know, you were the first year. I think that's very important. Yeah, um, just be yourself, you know, don't, don't worry, don't stress. Perfect, thanks everyone. Okay, three, two, one. <clears throat> okay. Well, Max uh, had done a season already at uh, what was Toro Rosso at the time, and um, our driver, uh, Danny Kvyat, was struggling to come to terms with, uh, with the car that we had. So it was decided that, that we would switch the two drivers. You know, when you get that opportunity, you just can't, you know, you can't, uh, you can't wait to go, you, to go for it. And I just approached the weekend very neutral. I didn't care about all the comments, you know, the media was saying about the, the move. It was now up to me to prove, to prove them wrong. Huge pressure on Max, he'd never driven the car before. A pair of overalls were rapidly made um, for him, a seat quickly created, and the first time he drove the car was pulling out of the pit lane uh, in Barcelona. I had a phone call saying, uh, you will have a new driver at the next race. I was like, okay, uh, it's, it's Max. I was like, fine, um, what do we need to do to get prepared for this? He, he walked in and you wouldn't have thought that he was like 17 or 18, whatever he was at the time. He was like, right, confident, what are we doing? Um, how, how long is this gonna take? Uh, do we need to do this? Do we need to do that? It's like, oh, okay. I think I was more intimidated about meeting him than, than he was the other way around. And that's never changed. <laughs> <laughs> First time I met GP, uh, I mean, of course, I had seen him walking around in, in the paddock, but um, it clicked instantly, I think. Um, of course, the relationship has grown a lot over the years, but. Yeah, it was very nice, straightforward, easy going, straight to the point. I think we all met him at the same time. It's when we heard about, when well, I heard about the news that morning, and he walked in, and we got introduced to him. He was going to be our new driver. It changed over, so, you know, really one evening, yeah. Yeah. boom, here we go. Yeah, I remember saying to John, we've got to make new floor stickers now, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I met Max was in the engine station in Spa. It's about that high. <laughs> He turned round and walked straight into a plate glass window. <laughs> and at that point, I knew he was going to be a future world champion. <laughs> well, I remember I met him in his first season of F1, I think in Melbourne. It's the way you could see that he was something special, something really talented, very confident and uh, ready to go. I think we did a seat fit the year before, just because we do with every drive, and he's not changed any of that since. <laughs> Sits in the same chair. Yeah. He pushed Daniel Ricciardo so hard that weekend and in the end qualified a, a couple of tenths behind him, I think on fourth on the grid, uh, and then went on to win uh, what has gone down in Formula One history now on his debut for the team, uh, an incredible win. I think, didn't you say you chucked in the car like four times? Yeah, five four times. times, and that was it, and then he went down and won the race. But to have that headspace at such a young age, with Kimi Raikkonen behind him, Barcelona in a new car, with a new team. Yeah, we were sort of looking over at Joss, and Joss stood there, you know, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to put myself. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, Max managed to keep 
skinny behind the whole time. The tyres didn't drop off. He made the strategy work and, and the two-stop ended up being the right thing. And it was, I was extremely impressed that Max managed to do that. It was not, not an easy job at all. Well, there wasn't much left of that rear left tyre, was there really? The weekend itself was totally seamless, like he'd been in the car for years already. He just picked up on everything we needed him to do immediately without error. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice record, but at the end, uh, it doesn't matter at what age you win as long as you win. Now you are fighting up front in F1 instead of like the midfield. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a good feeling. A massive debut for him and a, a great victory for the team. You believe you can do it and you think you can do it, but yeah. until you cross the line in first with all that pressure and, and on the world stage, so to speak, yeah. then it's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's like, a nice feeling. Okay, I, I can do it. You yeah, know? So, yeah I, it's good. Uh, still a lot of things to learn, but uh, of course a great feeling after winning. Well, I think it very clearly demonstrated that it was the right decision to make and I think that Everybody stood up and took notice of, of Max Verstappen that day and just what he was potentially capable of. Brazil 2016 was an incredible performance because it was horrible conditions, you couldn't see a thing. I think he embarrassed a few drivers that day, to be honest with you. Even behind the safety car in the last second, I couldn't drive it, it was like just a boat. So I said, guys, I'm, I'm going to pit now, otherwise I'm going to shunt the car. Then I was like almost last, I think I had one car behind me. I was about to touch the radio button, I was like, Max, just don't do it, don't do it. Ah, uh, to, to say yeah, like, second. what have we done sort yeah. of thing? It's like, oh my God, guys, we were like in second and now we are 16. That day it felt like we were on the wrong tyre all the time, didn't it? Any more updates, Max? I know, I think we could start just this rate. He had a spin, a half spin with an incredible save uh, that demonstrated the kind of car control and um, calm head that he, that he has in the car. I think you saw my like, near <laughs> crash, I mean... Yeah, it was a big moment, but uh, yeah, also at that point you, you start to just react really quickly, you try to keep it out of the wall, and then you realise, wow, that was actually, I think, quite a good save. But uh, yeah, these kind of images probably, they will never never go away. Luckily, of course, it worked. I mean, if you would have hit the wall, then of course it's a, a different story. Uh, the bit for me was just how relaxed he was after the spin. You just suddenly said, oh, that got a hard going. All half bloody hearts going as well at the same time. You hit the wall and turn 14? No, I just thought, oh my god, that was a bit moment. Uh, I think that, that race actually instigated uh, a different approach for some drivers in the wet because I think he went to grid searching all these different lines and finding where the grip was. And I think that's probably stuck in a lot of drivers' minds what happened out there on that track that day. In such a short time to, to pass that many cars, of course, was something uh, something special, and I definitely enjoy that. You can't let that happen to you again as a, as a racing driver. There's just this one guy out of 20 just running rings around everybody. It's, uh, it was insane. What sort of teammate am I? <laughs> this is, these are awkward questions. Ah, oh, yes, such a lovely, caring, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful teammate. <laughs> I think it's always nice if drivers, you know, teammates get on really well. Um, it helps the team as well. Friends, just friends. No? Friendly. Friendly. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it's really uh... passionate. Uh, passionate. Passionate. Okay, I'll take. I'll take the hobnobs. Give me your nuts, and I'll have your knob. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel to win the Unserious Space Series in Japan? Fantastic. Emotional. Mm. The crowd was amazing. Spicy. Mm. Spicy. Mm. I mean, great memories with, with Daniel as teammates. I think we also really pushed each other to, to the limit. Uh, what did you say to Max after his victory in Spain? Uh, I said enjoy it because it's your last and uh, I'm going to rip you down from that pedestal. Uh, okay. <laughs> Good day, mate. Of course, at the time I was still like really young. I think our relationship has really grown over the years. When I do this, you start talking. Hola todos. Hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs>
And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun activities together and uh, like here and there they pop up again. As much as I've loved your company in this conversation, I much more enjoy driving at 300 kilometers an hour through this part of the track. Ah, oh, shit, my microphone. <laughs> that was a good exit, that was perfect. What do you want to achieve in Formula One? Being world champion. I think that's everybody's uh, goal. That's, that's, if there's one answer, it's that. It shouldn't be only like work. You should also, you know, enjoy, I think, those years because they pass by very quickly. But that, the most interesting thing of the season, you never know, is it? It comes by a surprise. So I, I, I don't know. No, for me, it's all good. For me, there's been, working closely with him, there's been two stages in his development. I think the first one is, I think it was 2018, where we had a fairly rough ride in the first six or seven races. I mean, we couldn't do anything but crash into something or somebody, I think, that year. And I think there was a, a turning point where he realised he needed to change or things were going in the wrong direction, let's say. I remember Monaco when he went off in P3 yeah. and we couldn't get the car out because it was just time frustrating and it was just not rushing every session but he was just wanted to win every session, every lap yeah, and he yeah. came to P3 and he just clipped the inside, didn't he? Yeah. And went Trek off, off. Yeah. boom, yeah. broken. Yeah. And then when he realised that he couldn't go out for quality and that's when I saw him at his lowest out the back. Yeah. Because then from then on, mid-season onwards, he was then really competitive against Daniel for the rest of that year. So that, that was definitely one. The second one was, and I think that was a build up from 2018, is actually starting to learn that you needed to be at the checkered flag if you actually wanted to start competing for a championship. And I think that penny sunk through 20 when the car wasn't quite as competitive as it, as it was the following year. So he couldn't mount a, a championship challenge per se, but he was ultra consistent. And then in 2021, I think that's ultimately what won in the championship was his level of consistency. It's quite a privileged position to have been on both sides of that year. Um, but I think even being on the other side of it, there was a huge amount of respect for Max and his pace and his driving. And I think... His team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think probably the feeling on both sides was that Maybe both drivers, it's sad to see a loser out of it, but the standard of the driving throughout the year was just phenomenal. I, after the race, you know, I shared the podium uh, with Max and there was a few moments behind, behind the scenes that you could see what it meant to him and what it meant to everybody and seeing all the faces down, down below us on the podium and just the elation of everybody was just outstanding. Seeing him sitting behind the lights and all in Abu Dhabi with Joss, yeah. and very thinking right. what they've said that that's the that was the whole aim of all the pre-build of cars in years and all that was to be world champion one yeah, day, yeah. and seeing them two sitting behind the sort of just before the podium, yeah, yeah done it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know that first championship for him, as he said, anything else was a bonus thereafter, and I think he just stepped it up yet another level. To be honest, it's almost if you look back at, you know, Jill Wilner, he was like that all or nothing, then sang it a little bit back and there was the pace. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he found a confidence in himself and... He just built on that experience now, yeah. and he just... Yeah. He knows it's, he's good. I think it's about everybody feeling comfortable within the team, knowing what their role is, what their responsibility is, and, uh, and feeling, uh, you know, at one, at ease in the team and having trust and confidence in each other, because without that, uh, you wouldn't achieve the kind of results that we have. GP is the interface with the driver. He's the closest a driver has to a coach, is the engineering relationship with a driver. And I think you know, GP uh, and Max have a unique relationship that often plays out over the radio and that sometimes can be quite entertaining. What's really important is just to be able to be yourself. And I think Max feels he can be himself with me, I can be myself around him, and uh, there's no tiptoeing around any issues at all. You know, if we have to be blunt uh, about something with each other, we will be. And I think that just fast tracks you to um, short term gains, which ultimately is maximising the potential of the car during a race weekend. You know, I think 
use an analogy, it was a rough diamond when he died, you know. And I spent a lot of time with him disputing stuff early on. And bit by bit by bit, he just got better and better. First race win, changed the look in his eye. First championship win, ultimately changed the look in his eye. And I think what we're seeing now is we're seeing, I mean, he's still got further to develop for sure, but he's at an incredible level. And then 22 rolled into 23, and it's been an incredible, incredible run. It's been an incredible car, an incredible ride, an incredible year. We made history this year. Yeah, it's of course things that uh, I will look back to also in the future. And um, yeah, things that I will, I will never forget. 11 in a row, that's uh, pretty crazy. What an unbelievable rocket ship that was today. You joined Brabham, Lauda, Senna, PK, Stewart, Verstappen. Yes, uh, not about this, is it? Since he's become world champion, he's, calm, he's a lot calmer. He's always like he's accomplished it, and he's a lot of a calmer uh, driver. This year, for sure. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think this year has changed a lot. Three time world champion, that's unbelievable, mate. Absolutely unbelievable. Incredible year, thank you for providing me with such a car. Well done. You should be really proud. Yeah. Well amazing season yeah. that. You're seven on. Yeah. No, but honestly, yeah. mate, amazing what you've done this year. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Yeah. Well done, yeah. Well done, mate. yeah. Well done, mate. It was a shame today, like, just uh, the safety cars ruined our. Uh, I think without that, you would have been on okay. him. Yeah, they were still not digging enough. <laughs> he can go, uh, you know, a lot further based on his age and the talent that he has, what he's achieved already. Um, 49 Grand Prix victories. Uh, three world championships at 26 years of age is, is quite outstanding. We always you know, talk about performance, thank you, you, know, you say thank you for you know, giving me such a great car, but it's also very important to, to highlight that it's just really enjoyable to be able to work with all these people who you know, put their effort in and uh, they work flat out to try and you know, win championships together, um, here of course at the track but also back at the factory. That's, uh, there we go. You know, a few races left, what do you want to achieve for the rest of the season? Win more races. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, I think nowadays he's uh, a bit more chilled, I'll say. It's the it's right word. Confident as well. Uh, he's been always very confident though, but um, he's more chilled. Uh, he knows what he can do and uh, he just, um, it's a very relaxed boy. What makes the RB19 a rocket ship this season? Uh, the person in the seat. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's still the same guy that he was as a, as a young boy when he, when he came to have that raw speed and talent and raw ability is there, but now it's blended with uh, you know, maturity and experience and, and you know, he's very much the complete driver. Uh, what's the thing you like most about your job? Uh, the thing I like the most about my job is, of course, driving the car. You know, it's like a second family to me as well, so all these things together, I think, makes it, yeah, a really nice team to, to be part of. Fantastico! That's the last on-track marketing this season, Max. Woo! We survived! If you get a day completely free to yourself, what would you do with it? Um, I think I would go, I would go to the go-kart track and have some fun there.